That is haram. Okay, Honestly, that. you really need to grow up. You grew a beard, I thought you were religious, now you've proven to me that you're not even close. Let's face it, we're all sick of the haram police. You know those guys that come along when you're out and about just enjoying your time and all of a sudden decide to tell you that whatever you're doing is haram? <laughs> YouTube is haram! What? Yeah, those guys. Now a lot has been said, and rightfully so, about the haram police, whether it's about their arrogance, their aggression. Don't you understand? It's haram. It's really that simple. Or the fact that many of them come across as self-righteous, as though they're better than those that they're advising. You went, you grew a beard, tried to act religious, shave your beard, it doesn't suit you. You're not even religious. Now, while all these arguments are very valid and need to be talked about, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm here to talk about the fact that despite our grievances with the Haram police, we actually need them. Now when I say this, I'm not talking about the rude, arrogant, self-righteous Haram police that you're probably thinking about. Haram police. I'm talking about the need of having a group of people of good character and of course knowledgeable who are courageous enough to do the not so popular job of advising us right from wrong and enjoining the good and forbidding the evil especially when Allah praises such people in the Qur'an. <laughs> Bro, I, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I think you're going to miss the prayer and, and you still haven't prayed. And while many of us would love to believe that our sins are nobody else's business and we're only harming ourselves and only God can judge me. What? Even if I haven't prayed, what's it got to do with you? My sins are my sins. It's got nothing to do with you. I'm sick of you people telling me to do this. That's simply not true. The fact of the matter is, our sins, whether we admit it or not, do well and truly affect those around us. And advising people to stop sinning is not just to save them from harm, but more importantly, to save ourselves. How do I know this? Well, let me explain by way of an analogy given by none other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. Imagine you're on a ship with an upper deck and a lower deck with people occupying both floors. Now imagine for a second that those in the lower deck have the wild idea to attain water by busting a hole in the bottom of the ship. It's a stupid decision, I know, but what if those in the upper deck were to leave them alone? The fact is, the cracks at the bottom of the ship will eventually seep through, leading to everyone being harmed and eventually drowning, regardless of whether or not they partook in the stupid decision of busting a hole in the ship. And likewise, such is the example of those who sin in this life. While we may think that such sins don't affect us or aren't any of our business, Mind your own business! The fact is, public sins, especially those which we can all agree upon are sinful, when they are performed in public and we do nothing about it, we are all exposed to their harm and we will be held accountable by Allah. In fact, Allah in the Qur'an mentions that one of the reasons Bani Israel, the children of Israel were cursed, was for their inability to advise the wrongdoers to stop their sinful actions. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يضركم من ضل إذا اهتديتم Those who have gone astray will not harm you when you have been guided. At first glance, this verse gives the impression that the actions of those around us, their sins, won't affect us so as long as we have been guided. But when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu heard this verse, he says, no, you've got it completely misunderstood. For he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, in reference to this verse, that if the people see evil and they do not prohibit it, I fear Allah Azza wa Jal will encompass them in His punishment. This is a clear-cut warning on the need of having people to enjoin good and forbid evil. So while yes, we do have a problem with a branch of the Haram police who are arrogant, self-righteous and aggressive, at the end of the day, we do need a group of people to do the job, the unpopular job at that, of advising others to stop their wrongdoing. Of course, in a manner that befits the prophetic example of mercy, compassion and leniency. 
So the next time your random friend comes across and advises you to stop sinning, please don't tell him to mind his own business. Because at the end of the day, public sins are all our business. Jazakallah khairan. I hope I've been able to elaborate on this topic and really make you guys understand the significance of having people to advise and having people to enjoin good and forbid evil. For further videos, please, please subscribe to One Path Network YouTube channel and inshallah, help us continue making these videos. And Jazakallah khairan. Thank you, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.